Hi kids, today we want to talk about grammar. I really like to write, so I need to have good grammar. Let's begin. Okay kids, let's do advanced grammar. Okay kids, today we are going to do exercise 5, translating. Translate and then make a sentence with an adjective clause. All right. The key to translating from Mandarin to English is very simple if you follow three steps. Number one, identification. First, find the verb. What is the verb? The English verb is the most important part of a sentence. Then, find out who is doing the action. That's the subject. Find the verb, and then you can find the subject. What does the subject produce through his action? That's the object. So we find the verb, we find the subject, and then we find the object. That's step one. Number two, we need to know the verb tense. In English, there are 12 verb tenses. If you do not use the correct verb tense, your listener, your reader, will not understand the sentence. Number three, remember the basic English sentence is a subject, a verb, and an object. Now, I used three colors, verb, orange, subject, pink, and object, yellow. Then I went through and found the verb tense and I colored that green. The key words to tell you what the verb tense is. All right, and just remember, it's so important, follow the basic English sentence, subject, verb, object. So right now, I want you to take out your colors and I want you to color the sentences just like I did. You can stop the video and color. Remember also to write down any notes that Mr. Redisha made next to the sentence. All right, let's begin. Okay, sentence one, color the verb the subject, the object. Use your green to mark the key words for the verb tense. And look at, I wrote the sentence A tense is simple past. This verb tense for sentence B is present perfect. Okay, let's look at question number two. All right, use your colors. Find the verb, color the verb, find the subject, find the object. Then use your green color to determine the tense. In both these sentences, the tense is simple present. Why? We are talking about a fact. If we talk about a fact, that is simple present. Number three. Number three is a very difficult sentence. The first sentence, A, that is simple past. That's very straightforward, very easy to understand. But sentence B is more difficult. Why? Well, first of all, we have this pattern here. It says, told us, told us what? Well, told us what? That is a direct object. So this part of the sentence that I underlined in blue, that's a noun clause acting as a direct object. Do you see it? Told us what? That's the object. And that is a noun clause. All right. Now, another thing about this sentence is there are two actions here, two verbs. Okay? Now, because there are two verbs, we and they both happened in the past, we need to know which one happened first, okay? So the first action, we use past perfect. 
and that will tell your reader, okay, look at this action happened first. Okay, let's look at number four. Take out your colors. Okay, color the subject, the verb, the object. Use your green to find the signal words that tell you the verb tense. Well, sentence A is simple present because it's a fact. You remember something. That's a fact. The next one, sentence B, it says it's that simple past because it says you were born. Well, you were already born. That's over. That's a completed action. So that is simple past. All right, look at number five. Again, use your colors to color. Find the verb, find the subject, find the object. All right, now this tense is again simple present because it's telling us a fact. What's important about sentence A? Sentence A, there's the B verb here. This is really not an object. I used the yellow to color it as the object, but it's not an object. This is called a subject complement. So we have subject, B verb, subject complement. What does that mean, a subject complement? Well, this, what I colored in yellow, this could go in front, and what I colored in pink could go in back. They can switch. If they can switch, this is called the subject, subject complement. If this goes in front, it's a subject. This goes in back, it's a subject complement. For example, Mr. Radisha is my teacher. I could also say, my teacher is Mr. Radisha. So sentence A is subject plus B verb plus subject complement. Make sure you write this down. Write down the tense and write down any note that I make. All right, number six, number six. All right, color the verb, color the subject, color the object, use your green, find the signal words that are telling you the verb tense. Okay, now, in this sentence, the verb tense is simple present. Again, we're talking about a fact, okay? Now look at here again, look at number six. It says, this subject, B verb is, and the subject complement. Now I colored that yellow as an object, but it's not an object. This is called a subject complement. I could take this part, this yellow part, put it in front. I could take the pink part, throw it in back, and it would be the same. So we have a subject plus B verb plus subject complement. Okay, number seven. Use your colors again. Find the verb, find the subject, find the object. Use your green to write the tense. Now, look at that. That tense is obviously simple past, all right? Now here is the difference between English and Chinese. Here, in English, this is going to be a preposition, okay? So we have to remember that. That's why I underlined this in blue to remind us that this is very special. All right, number eight. All right, again, find your verb, find your subject, use your green, to write out the tense. Now, this sentence A, it doesn't look like we have a subject, but there is a subject. All right, so that's why uh, we don't have a pink here, because there is a subject, and I will explain that when we write the sentence. Okay, and look at this, look at this, these words here to describe that verb tense, okay? Now, tense A, Sentence A, that is simple present because it's stating a fact. Sentence B, look at that. We have here, look at here. And then we have this time, last night. Yeah, last night at dinner time, yeah. That is called past progressive. So in the past, it, something was happening continuously over a time. 
That's called past progressive. All right, make sure you write down everything. Make sure you write down the notes. All right. Okay, number nine. Again, take out your colors. Find the verb, color the verb. Find the subject, find the object. Take your green, color the signal words that are telling you the tense. In sentence A, the tense is simple present. That's a fact. Look at there. That's telling you this is simple past. So sentence B is simple past. All right, number 10, number 10. Again, color your verbs, find your subjects, all right? Use your green. This is in the simple present. It's talking about a fact. All right, number 11, again, use your colors, color the subject, color the verb, color the object. Now, what is the tense in sentence A? Well, here we, we see this and we know that that is talking about the future. So the tense in sentence A is simple future. But look here, that, that tells us this is simple past. Okay, number 12. Again, take out your colors. That's color. Now here is different. This be verb, look at here. This is an adjective. So we have subject, be verb, and an adjective. Okay. Here we have our color this, color the verb, the subject. Now, this is obvious that this is simple future. So the tense is simple future. Write it down. All right, number 13. Again, pick out your colors, find the verb, find the subject, find the object. This sentence is simple present. Again, it's a fact. All right, very good. Make sure you color everything. Make sure you wrote down all the notes that Mr. Redisha wrote. Okay, we have identified the verb, the subject, and the object in each sentence. We have figured out the verb tense. And now we are going to translate. And remember, subject, verb, object. S, V, O. Number one, A, a thief broke into my house last night. B, the police have already caught the thief. Number two, A, Mandarin is different from English. B, Mandarin uses characters. English uses an alphabet. Three, we bought some trees last week. B, our neighbor had already told us that the trees were on sale. Remember, that the trees were on sale is a noun clause. So, neighbor told us what? That's the direct object. Number four, A, I remember the day. B. My son was born on a stormy day. 5. Yellowstone National Park is a huge wilderness. B. You can have a lot of fun in the wilderness. 6. A. Matt knows the classmate. B. This classmate's score was the top grade. Seven. A, 
the teacher chose the class monitor. B, we voted for him. Number eight, that is the woman. B, I was talking to that woman at dinner last night. Number nine, A, I know that lucky boy. B, that boy won the art contest last semester. 10, my teacher isn't sure about the test paper. B, that test paper has no name on it. 11, A, I am going to buy that best-selling book. B, you recommended that book to me. 12, A, tomorrow's typhoon will be extremely powerful. B, the typhoon will hit Taiwan's eastern coast. 13, A, this is John's desk. B. John does his homework at this desk. Very good. Okay, kids. Thank you for watching this video. Now I need you to do a big favor for me. I want you to like this video. And I want you to leave a comment for me. I want you to write, thank you, Mr. Redisha, and then leave your English name. Really appreciate it. Thanks.